Hello! Today we're taking a brief look into the much talked about DLC potential for Final Fantasy XVI, with a top 5 for story angles, plot holes, or characters to develop if they were to extend the game. Naturally, this is a hypothetical and purely speculative episode designed to prompt conversation, so feel free to share your thoughts, ideas, and indeed, perhaps narrative gripes with Final Fantasy XVI in the comments, and any DLC potential that you would like to see emerge. So, jumping right in at number 5, we have the potential for narrative expansion around the lost Leviathan icon, and the reason this warrants discussion is because it's very much an unresolved kind of Chekhov's gun in the central story, wherein it's dangled in front of the player in a tasty bit of dialogue and a bit of lore, but it's simply never capitalised upon or really returned to again by the characters or the story. Now, there's been plenty of speculation around whether this was an intended summon in the game that was written out entirely because of reasons, or whether it was always intended to become some sort of extension of the Final Fantasy XVI story in the form of DLC or some other media expansion. But regardless, it's certainly an aspect of the game that sticks out like a sore thumb as a bit of unresolved story, and it's led to many fan theories around whether there's an existent dominant for Leviathan. For example, some are speculating that Dion's little helper, uh, the Medicine Girl, may be a latent dominant for Leviathan. And indeed, there's wider conversations around which of the Mother Crystals is attributable to this lost Leviathan as well. So, there's certainly plenty of potential for explanations and expansions here, whether that's a continuity of the Final Fantasy XVI timeline as we played through it, or indeed some long-distant prequel that tells the story of Leviathan that somehow links in with the present day and the game that we've already played. Moving on to number four, we have Barnabas. Now, personally, I liked Barnabas. He was mysterious, crazy, and very much slotted in to that wild penultimate villain role that we often see in Final Fantasy games. His Odin was a fantastic rendition of this legacy summon, and I also really liked his creepy Lord Commander, Slepnir, that he kind of magicked out of nowhere. And both of these guys were really cool to sort of battle against in, in quite an abbreviated way towards the end of the game. However, as with many aspects of Final Fantasy XVI, his, his story is somewhat abbreviated and abrupt, and while we get hints of his backstory and his origins around, for example, his mother, we get hints of the esoteric religion that he's a part of, which worships Ultima. And we also see this in a, a couple of random side quests too. Um, one particular standout one is where we see followers of this religion purposefully turning themselves uh, into Akashic in Walud. So very interesting sort of crazy stuff going on with that. And quite simply, I find that there's much more we could discover about not only Barnabas, but also the origins of this cult, and specifically perhaps his mother that formulated his worldview. So a nice opportunity to get two birds with one stone, I think, if they were to go down this path of exploring Barnabas, but also Walud itself, which we didn't see too much of in the game, and of course the religious aspect of the world and story. And as we've seen from, for example, Ardin Azunia's DLC in Final Fantasy XV, tracing the origins of Final Fantasy villains can actually prove an immensely popular thing to do. So I would be keen to see more of Barnabas, or if not, simply some world-building quests around Walud and, and that cult in particular. In at number three is a character, or rather a set of characters, so I suppose I am cheating here, but a set of characters that I think a lot of people may like to see expounded upon, centering around the core character of Sid Telamon. Because, of course, Sid was and is an immensely important character in Final Fantasy XVI that sees us through the first two acts of the story and had a huge impact on the events, and particularly on Clive's story arc, uh, wherein Clive in many ways becomes Sid's living legacy and, and the proponent of his worldview. But working our way backwards from that, uh, and the central game, we have this band of motley loyalists that comprise Clive's team, such as Gav, such as Otto, Mid, Vivian, and so on. And I think it would be really interesting to consider the origin stories for each of these characters, and Sid's role in particular in bringing them together, which is alluded to throughout the game in, in idle dialogue. 
that many might argue is ripe for a prequel segment that focuses on Sid himself and could take the form of something that includes everyone. So, for example, there's quite a scarcely used but very effective narrative form that I quite like, which is the sequelized prequel, which is to say, for example, we have the characters such as Gav, Otto, in the hideaway, talking and telling their stories about how they met Sid, and then the events kind of flashing back to a prequel of Final Fantasy XVI, where we actually play through those segments as a potential DLC. Now... In at number two, we have an equally popular character, and one that I have discussed recently, which is Dion. Now, the Prince of Sambrek is undoubtedly a centrepiece of Final Fantasy XVI's appeal, and his tragic story of well-intentioned yet doomed decisions really leaves its mark on fans who, who play this game. However, there's a vocal minority who make a case for Dion surviving, Dion having some sort of ongoing plot development and sequel potential with the Medicine Girl, with Terence, and indeed, more broadly, Dion pulling together the remains of the kingdoms into a more positive world that Clive has enabled for them, you know, by his sacrifice. And I think that is certainly uh, quite an appealing sort of potential for, for DLC there, if Dion were to survive, have this full redemption arc. And you know, as fans state, to kind of pull together the broken remnants of what's left of civilization, it's hard to think of a better, more well-intentioned character to actually do that. And finally, lastly, at number one for DLC potential, we have Benedicta Harmon, who, for me, along with Dion, stands out as one of the most intriguing sub-characters to feature in the game. And while I wouldn't necessarily say she was my favourite character in the game, uh, because I like quite a few, and if I had to choose, I'd probably say Dion. What I would say is that if it came to prequels, if it came to ex extended stories and, and more involved character arcs for specific characters, I think Benedicta is certainly the one that I would personally go for. Because of many, as many people have suggested, and as I personally find myself agreeing with, her arc did have a lot of potential in Final Fantasy XVI, more so than actually what we got to see in the game. There was a lot hinted at, but it wasn't really resolved or, or fleshed out enough for us to really empathise and get that full impact of her character. So I would really love to see something that documented Benedicta's origins, uh, particularly perhaps her coming into contact with Sid for the first time, but perhaps more so her being aligned with Sid and, and their former roles in Walud and the scenario that saw him eventually abandon her, uh, because the emotional fallout of that, what leads her into, you know, loyalty and league with Barnabas more thoroughly, is very much that abandonment issue around Sid. So I think being able to witness that firsthand in, in some sort of prequel would be absolutely fantastic for the events of Final Fantasy XVI. So there we have it, a very brief top five, uh, uh, quite a quick fire look at the potential for DLC character stories that I think could warrant uh, exploration in any Final Fantasy 16 continuity. If you got this far, uh, thanks very much for listening, and I would love to hear your thoughts and suggestions for how you might want to, or not, uh, expand and improve Final Fantasy 16 by the means of DLC or extended universe material.